Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Mark and Mike of Massive Late Fee here. We are doing our audio commentary, our very first one, uh, and we've chosen the film Clerks, Kevin Smith's seminal work. Uh, what do you think of the movie, Mike? Uh, are you excited to, to do this one? Are you excited to do the audio commentary? Yeah, I haven't seen this movie in a really long time. I'm just kind of like looking at how it holds up. And also, <laughs> I, w I wish we had the real audio commentary because uh, I'm sure all the effusive praise for Harvey Weinstein that would be on it would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that that the movie might hold up, but that certainly won't hold up. Harvey doesn't play by the rules. <laughs> He's the kind of man that just takes what he wants, you know? That's how we got this movie made. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay, so everybody listening at home, we are on the uh, the View Askew Productions logo. So hit play now. This clown is... Uh, I'm, I'm glad it didn't show up anymore in, uh, in the movie, in any of his movies, because it is creepy as shit. Yeah, that's really weird. Was that like done just for that? I would assume then, or it seems like a, a an unnecessary expense. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was like maybe his er, like early production company logo that he obviously changed. Well, we get the first title card and and Dante uh, answering the phone, and this is a great introduction to his character. I think uh, where you know his uh, he's got plans. His um, boss is calling him into work. He says, uh, you know, he can't do it. And, you know, he folds almost immediately. I mean, you can tell he doesn't want to do it. And he agrees to it anyway because he feels obligated to. It, it just, this gives us a lot of his character right here in a very short amount of time. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that dog, I mean, that's weird that you just see the dog like at the beginning. It's like a huge dog. You think you'd have to like go home to like take it out multiple times. A day. Yeah, and he, um, Wait, you know, does, does he live by himself? I don't remember. I think he, he lives, lives with his parents. I think he lives yeah, with his parents. Sense. But yeah, we never see that dog again ever. <laughs> well, we know by this time it's probably dead in real life. <laughs> I did real quick. I uh, I read a cracked article one time of uh, a uh, where this guy did a uh, every time he had to look something up. It was for uh, the Fourth of July, I think, or something like that. Every time he had to look something up to write his article, he would take a drink, and it was celebrity pets. Where are they now? And they were all dead. <laughs> So as the article went on and on, he's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Why did I do this? <laughs> Why would you do that in the first place? It was hilarious. Oh, the iconic quick stop groceries. That, uh, you know, it's funny how different it looks in black and white than it, than it does in color. And obviously with... Uh, you know, some higher grade film. This is, uh, this, this print is, you know, slightly grainy. Oh, Scott Mosier. He's, uh, he's directing the new, uh, Grinch movie that's coming out. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's, star didn't he, what do you, what do you do before that? Didn't he do, uh, do you, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Something about a clown. Do you know what I'm talking about? Was it called vulgar? Did he do that? Yes. Yeah, he did. I didn't see that, did you? I heard it. I, I, I wasn't, was Brian O'Howard in that one? I think he was. Yeah, I haven't seen that one at all, no. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, you know, he started producing with Kevin Smith, and and now he's a, uh, making a big budget Hollywood Grinch movie. Is that animated? I, I couldn't, I can't remember. I, I saw a preview for it. I couldn't tell you anything about it, though. I haven't actually seen the preview yet, but I think it is animated. So I heard that uh, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch maybe, yeah. was doing the voice for it. Yeah. Um, but in the pre in the and I've seen it in commercials and like uh, my kids watch Nick at Night, not Nick at Night, Nickelodeon. Like they're in some of those commercials, you know. Mm -hmm. It's obviously not him doing doing the voice for those, but I mean, it's I don't know, it's weird. Yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch. So 
uh, you know, we see a li- we see a little more of, of Dante's character here, his uh, ingenuity in getting the the newspapers and uh, you know uh, putting on the open sign and everything. It's so funny too because it seems like the entire universe is telling him not to be there or not to open up the store. He can't. He, there's no newspapers to give out. He can't uh, open the shutters. He could have easily just, you know, just blown this off. Oh, yeah, for sure. And really, this kind of goes back to my comment um, on our last show about how Dante basically just puts himself, puts himself through hell. Yep. I mean, he literally, I mean, there's a, a hundred excuses that he it doesn't have to open the store. I mean, obviously, the first one is this is day off, and it's like a minimal like wage kind of job he doesn't have to show up i mean it's not his job he plays running yeah and the locks are jammed uh you know i mean that alone i mean that's a, a dangerous thing if you can't open those uh, windows you could get robbed much more easily oh yeah as we see in the altar yeah for sure and you know it's a fire hazard this uh this is a great way to kind of open this too with the uh the chulies gum uh representative trying to sell chulies gum and uh, like starting this little, uh, uh, I don't know, sit in or riot against him. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you think a gum company wouldn't have enough money to get like a guy to go out and actively try and sell the gum? Like he's really pushing it hard. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, it's uh, the, it's it's bizarre. But um, because you would think if a one either a gum company is so big like Wrigley's or something like that that they wouldn't need to do this or they're so small they couldn't afford to pay a guy <laughs> a a wage to uh, come out right. here and push Chuli's gum. And instead of like giving away samples, the guy literally buys the gum from uh, Dante and then hands it to him. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. You wouldn't have sample packs on him? You would think so. Drumming up sales for gum. And then again, uh, Dante just kind of lets the guy hang out. He's like, okay, you can hang out here. Yeah. I mean, so it's in his own fault. Yeah, again, like you said, and he, he, you know, he puts up a little resistance, but, uh, you know, but doesn't uh, go through with it at all. I mean, could you imagine someone trying to do this to Randall when we meet Randall later? Later? We're about to meet Randall right now. Yeah, that's true. And really, this is like a perfect, like, you know, comparison to their openings. Like, when we first meet Randall versus when we first meet Dante, it basically tells us everything about their personalities in the first 60 For sure, yep. Because Dante is like a pushover, he's whiny, and, you know, but he ultimately he'll do something if you ask him to. Randall just doesn't care at all, like this whole uh, waiting in line in the uh, mm-hmm. for the uh, video sort of. Screwing with that girl and everything, it's great. There's uh, the... Uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, we got Jay and Bob. Kevin Smith looking, uh, I mean, he's looking thin now uh, after his heart attack and, and he's started to take care of himself, but he looks real thin and young here. Oh, yeah, for sure. I wonder if, um, like, if he had known how successful his movies were going to be, if he would have still cast himself as Silent Bob. I don't know. That's a good. That's a good question. So I think he would have, because even though he himself says he can't act, which I would agree with that for the most part. <laughs> um, although he's good in, in some, like he's pretty. Even though it's a terrible movie, uh, Live Free and Die Hard, he's pretty good in that as the Wizard. I don't know if you've seen that. I, I think that's one of the ones I haven't seen. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen him in anything else. Um, but I mean, it's just I, I think he just kind of likes. He obviously likes some sort of notoriety. And he's a really you know wreck and tour type of guy. So. Mm-hmm. I, would, I mean, the evening with Kevin Smith things are always entertaining. So, I mean, I'm sure he enjoys having it up. But, I mean, it maybe would have been, especially as a first-time director, it would have been a lot easier just to have somebody else do Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's funny. Uh, at a couple different points, you can see when they're when they go back to Jay and Bob, you can see the, uh, the, ki- the, guy, the kid filming the camera guy in the window. <laughs> I caught it once. I'm going to look out for that now. Here's this rant. It's so funny, too, to sell some gum. <laughs> he basically turns him into a, into a Hitler. Yeah, pretty much. He just throws a dollar at him. I'm buying, I'm buying <laughs> Chuli's gum. 
<laughs> oh. I don't think this would work, to be honest with you. As someone who has smoked and does smoke, I really don't think this would work. You don't think so? <laughs> no, I think I think most people would be like, uh, eh, screw you up, buy my cigarettes. In, in fact, doesn't somebody do that like 10 seconds after the riot's over? Oh, yeah. I is, that, is that Dante with the uh, fire extinguisher? Or no, uh, no Randall? No, that's uh, his girlfriend. Oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't. I just saw the smoke and I couldn't remember who it was. And we get her like assertive personality too. She demands to uh, see credentials from him. <laughs> just what the fuck did you expect to see there? Right. I knew it. Chulies again. <laughs> oh, I wonder if, you know, it's so funny. You don't think about product placements in movies like this. I don't think that Entenmann's thing is a, is really a product placement. I wonder. Oh, I can't imagine it is. I wonder if they had to clear it with Entenmann's, though. Or like Cambridge Cigarettes or some of these other brands that you see. I mean, this is stuff that's just, you know, as a lot of people know, this was, uh, he filmed this at a store uh, that, you know, he worked at. So all this is pretty much just the stuff that was in the store. It wasn't it at night as well, so um, so that's, that's partial explanation for why the shutters are stuck because he, that would explain why it's dark out all the time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he they had to shoot uh, at night. Like I, uh, I don't, I don't believe he was still actually working there at that time. So that'd be, uh, I'd say that'd be a real bear to uh, work there and then film. <laughs> right. Uh, now I know. He met a lot of um, of people when he was at film school for a short period of time. Like he met uh, Mosier there, I know, and Dave Klein, who does a lot of who's done a lot of cinematography for him. And I think he met a couple of the actors maybe at the college too. Wasn't that up in uh, Canada, like yeah. in Toronto? Maybe no, I don't. I think, think that's Vancouver, right. I believe. Oh, wow, that's like way the hell on the other side of the uh, country. Yeah, west side of Canada. So he was definitely already used to like taking big risks for his, uh, you know, his future art. Yep. This is also another interesting insight into Dante's personality when he's painting uh, his girlfriend's nails and he just leaves that thing up there and trusts that people will, you know, take leave as much money as they need to and take change that they need to because right. he thinks they're being watched. You know, what's interesting though, is I, I, I didn't realize this because again, I haven't seen this movie for a while. Um, in clerks too, he actually, uh, paints Rosario, uh, Rosario Dawson's nails as well. That's true. Her toenails. I wonder if Dante's got like some secret, like n- nail polish fetish that, uh, they're kind of slowly revealing in here. <laughs> If they make a Clerks 3, he's going to murder Randall and everyone else. And, uh, you know, he's going to do it while sniffing nail polish. <laughs> nice. I, I, I kind of would like to see Clerks 3, but only because I really enjoy the characters so much. Mm-hmm. I did not care for Clerks 2 that much myself. I don't know how you felt about it. I mean, there are definitely some good parts, but some of the parts, like, they were just not good. Like that, uh, his whole coworker thing. Yeah. Like the the kind of younger guy with his whole speech about his girlfriend, why they weren't uh, making Whoopi. Yeah, yeah. There were there were a couple uh, parts of that that were really good and really uh, reminiscent of, especially earlier Kevin Smith works that I liked and I thought were funny. But a lot of it was, a lot of it was just you know kind of cringeworthy. Yeah, I think I think he couldn't really connect to the material. I mean, maybe if he. Th- if he had written that when he had written Clerks, it would have been funny to him. But I, I don't know. It's just I, I didn't really feel that he was like really a big believer in the in the material itself because usually his jokes are better than what was in Clerks. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there was like the the, uh, the Lord of the Rings versus um, Star Wars thing was was pretty funny, and there was maybe one or two other little bits that were funny, but most of it was just kind of, and it was very like you said, it was very. Um, it was flat. It's a flat movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there was, uh, you know, obviously the callback to them working at movies, which was from uh, Dogma, which is actually my favorite Kevin Smith movie. I don't know if we talked about that. Which one's your favorite one? Dogma. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I just watched that which, uh, last night, actually. Which is funny because, again, I, I de- detected a pattern. I like movies with like a philosophical element to them, which Dogma for sure has to it. Oh, yeah. Here's uh, Scott Mosier as uh, Snowball. I never realized it was Scott Mosier. <laughs> yep, that's him. That's the you direct- mean Will- You mean Willem, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the Will- Willem Black who who suddenly changes into Ethan Suppley in the next movie. Yeah, he did like the opposite of what Ethan Suppley eventually did, which was he gained a lot of weight. Yeah. In a different face. <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, that. That's the new director of your kids' classic, uh, "How the Grinch Stole Christmas." Snowball. <laughs> What's like, funny is like how disconnected this character is. He just seems like he's like perpetually like fucked up or high or something, right? So that makes you think just how easily it is to get a beejer off of uh, off of Dante's woman. Oh, I know. I mean, if Snowball can get one, and she agreed to spit it back into his mouth. It's so gross. Yeah, she's like, yeah, okay. You're a charmer. Oh, and although coming up is one of the funniest lines in the movie. Yeah, for sure. I know what you're talking about there. But uh, yeah, this conversation is, you know, it's funny too. I'll, I'll bet that a lot of, you know, teenagers or early 20 somethings when this movie came out or even now who watch it um, can relate to this conversation between uh you know, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, because it's one of those things where kind of like he says in dogma, um, you know, you don't want to know, but you have to know kind of thing as a guy. Is that way? Is that dogma or um, right. is it uh, chasing, Amy. chasing Amy? Yeah. Yeah. I had dogma in my mind, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. It's, I mean, I mean, to be fair though, it's not as disgusting for her because she's already probably going to spit it out at some point anyways. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's not like she was trying to savor it. <laughs> oh my god! Like a fine wine. Oh, it's got yeah, it. Did you, did you have upper nickel bread earlier today? <laughs> it's got a salty finish. Oh, uh, thirty-seven in a row. Yeah, that's the that's the line. It's so funny. Uh, yeah, that's probably the best line in the whole movie. <laughs> Oh my god! I like how he like he just like genuinely thinks that he meant like he's like oh in a row that's that's, that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's impressive. Is she in the Guinness Book? If it were, if it were a total number, that he's like yeah, that's thirty seven. But oh, there's another pretty good joke too. Uh, more of a sight gag, uh, you know, right after this part when uh, he screams after her. Try not to suck any dick on your way to the car, and that guy turns around like he's gonna follow. Just follows her. (laughs) Yeah, that's good. (laughs) Uh, Really funny stuff in this movie. Thirty-seven is a lot. I mean, I I I understand where Dante's coming from. Like, it's kind of funny because she's just offended. I mean, she obviously has a good point because it was before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, everyone's got a past kind of thing. Oh, here we go. Oh, here comes the true star of the movie, yep. Randall. And what, what's the point of that if you plan to shoplift let us no sign anyway? I don't know. It's very weird. I'll bet that. It's I'll bet dumb. I'll bet that is the actual sign, though. I don't think they changed. They might have changed a few things around uh, to shoot, but I don't think they changed much of. Uh, of anything in in the actual store. <laughs> There's uh <laughs> Jeff Anderson's got uh a very well I'll, I'll I'll talk about that when he gets to it, when we get to it, but I've got a I got a little story about uh one of his um one of his scenes coming up. The happy scrappy puppy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but, uh, yeah, we get, we get word of him. They, they really, um, they really, uh, they, they kind of introduce Randall before they introduce Randall with, with all that conversation about him and everything. We get 
kind of an idea of what uh, what he is. But of course, we don't know that this is him, you know, on our on our first viewing. It's funny back then, like, you won't see that nowadays where there's a no smoking sign, just because, he, I mean, probably some of the younger listeners would never know that you couldn't just smoke. You could just smoke pretty much anywhere at a certain point. Oh, yeah. I remember here in Michigan, uh, my dad would take us to Lions games at the Silver Dome where you could smoke, and it was an oh, yeah. In- yeah, it was like a fog of smoke. Yeah, like an indoor dome stadium by halftime. There was like <laughs> there was like a haze over the field. And if you were at a Lions game, you, you needed to smoke. Oh, yeah. Just like today. Oh, yeah, not a good day for the Lions today. Ugh. And to the Bears. I hate the Bears so much. The oh, Randall yeah. Walk. <laughs> Look at those cigarette prices, too. $2.40 for a pack. Yeah, I was trying to notice that earlier. I can't say, uh, I like, what's that? Oh, yeah. they have a one liter and a two liter? I know they had one liters back then. Oh, yeah. Man, they're still jacking up the prices way back then. Yeah, I know. $1.29. That's still a lot. It's like I wish uh, I wish you would say what what videos uh, Dante was returning to him, or those weren't Dante's videos, were they? No, the uh, the few different like assorted customers, like oh, yeah, that's, that's right, one from that guy and some other people. But yeah, what a great reveal that that sounds. <laughs> I'll bet you twenty bucks. And I get it. I get the movie. <laughs> and could that woman look any more like somebody who lives in New Jersey? Yeah, no kidding. Oh. And like five minutes after opening, Randall's just next door. And then I love this too, where he's talking about uh, how how he tore up the guy's membership and everything. Kicks <laughs> kicks him out of the store because he's arguing about late fees. <laughs> just, but the best part of, about that is, you know, Randall doesn't care about the late fees. He just wants to be a dick. Yep. Oh, and now, uh, now we get the uh, one part of the subtext of this whole movie where he talks about um, starting to talk about Brie, Caitlin Brie, and uh, that's the uh, the girl that he that he wants to be with, even though Veronica is uh, so good to him. Do they ever? Sh- they don't ever show her, do they? No, she's in the movie. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! At the very end, that's right. But yeah, uh, another way that he kind of he puts himself through hell, you know, because he has something good, but he's attracted to something that makes him hurt. And no offense to Brian O'Halloran, but uh, he's not exactly a Mister Get Every uh, Attractive Woman That Walks By kind of guy, you know? <laughs> right? Especially now, you know. Uh, he cleaned. He cleaned up his. He cleaned up his eyebrows a little after after he got some fame from this movie. But yeah. But hey, uh, he knows the guy who directed The Grinch, so maybe he's in that. That's true. I, you know, I bet he still gets a decent amount of work in places. I would hope so. I mean, he's a good actor. He's good in this. I mean, he 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 plays a character that's both likable and unlikable at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's hard to do. You're right. Look at those uh, special on those cigarettes, a dollar fifty. Yeah, I'm doing nothing but looking at the prices of the cigarettes and be like, "Wow, two dollars!" Oh my god! Because you know people were complaining about the price back then too. This movie will be 25 years old. It's pretty uh, next year. Oh wow! It was I didn't realize it was 93. I thought it was like 95 for some reason. 94, 94 is when it came out. They filmed oh, so it. it was, they filmed it in 93, and yeah, came out in 94. 25 years next year. Oh. Back when they had cheap smokes. Yeah. Caitlin's fiance. And like, um, Jay and Bob are kind of like, um, they're like, I don't even know. It not as, They're like scene breaks, basically. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, look at the uh, jacket, the bum equipment. Oh, God, yeah. Happy Scrappy Hero Pup. Yeah, this was the <laughs> one, this was the one scene that Jeff Anderson really didn't want to didn't want it to. He was very uncomfortable um you know doing this uh this scene. But um 
Yeah, see, I remember it. They never show them on the sa- screen at the same time, so I'm assuming he's not saying that in front of her. That's what I. That's yeah. That's my assumption as well, because you can kind of tell the way they they go shot reverse shot uh, back and forth between the two of them. I mean, they you know they aren't even necessarily in the same room, and she's uh, yeah, or even there at the same time. Yeah, and she's uh, the little girl is just kind of looking off. I'm assuming probably to uh, you know her dad or. Something like that. Look at the weird like system they have for their videotapes. They're like A and then like three numbers. Yeah. That's like the worst possible way. But like, knowing Randall, he probably has it all memorized. Right. Uh again for our younger viewers, that's what's called a payphone. Yeah. Yeah, you won't see those around anymore. Oh the <laughs> the cat's coming up. Yeah. Didn't that cat actually live at the the convenience store? I believe yes. That the the cat, um, I think it was uh, Jason Mew's cat, actually. Oh, that wouldn't be a shocker. But I heard that uh, he he planned ahead to get a shot of the cat going to the bathroom. Yeah, that cat is also long dead, of course. Yeah, the owner, okay, so according to what I've read, the owner hid the cat's litter box for a day, hoping he'd rush to it as soon as it was was presented on the store counter, and it worked. (laughs) So they just, they kept the cat from being able to shit for a day, so they could get this shot. Oh, wow. Kodak film there, too? Oh, This was a time capsule. No kidding. There we go. Oh, uh, this is... I- Ivan, is that his name? Yeah. And um, I believe that this is... It's, I can't remember her first name. And they haven't. I don't think they've said it yet. But um, it's Alyssa Jones's younger sister. So this is the girl from Chasing Amy's younger sister. What's odd is she kind of... You could see... You could... If you look at her, you wouldn't be shocked if she actually was uh, Joey Lauren Adams' sister. Yeah. She kind of looks somewhat similar to her. Yeah, she does. She really does. Good casting. Before he even met Joey Lauren Adams. I swear, each woman they show is like a more progressively New Jersey type. Yeah. The big hair all uh, spritzed out with um, with Giant earrings. Spray. Yeah, big earrings. Man, fashion has definitely changed a lot since uh, since this movie came out. Not for Kevin Smith, though. <laughs> I love this. My love for you is like a <laughs> truck berserker. Would you like be making fuck berserker? <laughs> I just noticed he has a shirt that says USA on it. Yeah. He's a bit like he's trying to fool someone. <laughs> hey, that accent. Where's that? Oh, USA. You're from here. <laughs> I like how Randall has the attention span of like a gnat. Yeah. Well, it's so funny, too, because I believe he's watching, um, I believe he's watching Star Wars at that time, and he's so, he's so, like... Compelled to talk about his newfound discovery about the movie. Yeah, yeah, he just, he wants to go to Randall. uh, (laughs) Before he forgets it. This guy with his hand caught in the Pringles can. Which I don't, any fans of Bo Burnham out there who've seen, uh, I believe it's called Make Happy, his special, uh, the song that he uh, sings at the end of that, where he talks about uh, his hand is too big to fit inside a Pringle can. I like how he's just in such pain from that, like he's flexing his (laughs) And then like... uh... Dante's like, oh, this guy who's not smart enough to get his hand out of a Pringle can by himself, I'm going to eat chips after he touches them. <laughs> right. Oh. He's so upset that Caitlin's getting married. It's oh. not to Rick Darius, is it? No, it's to an Asian design major. Oh yeah, that's a... they 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 point out that he's Asian in the wedding in the, <laughs> in the wedding thing. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite uh, Return of the Jedi or, or uh, Empire? Empire, blasphemy. 
<laughs> but yeah, this is this is um this is not the funniest part of the movie, but this might be one of the most like interesting Iconic. and yeah, and like compelling parts of the movie. This is a really interesting conversation about this is- uh, the, the uh, this is something you would would not see in a movie before Clerks, as far as I I've never seen the movie Slacker, the Richard Linkletter movie. Right. It, they may have similar conversations in that, but this is like, I imagine the type of people are like, oh my god, they're just having a conversation about another movie that has nothing to do with the plot in this movie. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like uh, like a thing, like a scene from Seinfeld or something like that. Uh, yeah, for sure. Which you know wasn't super popular at this point either. Yeah, it probably did. Oh no, that came out in like '89, didn't it? Uh, the yeah. Seinfeld Chronicles. I think yeah, '89 or '90. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't really pick up until like around '95, '96. But uh, yeah, and uh, it just so happens that there's a um, that there's a contractor on. Yeah, I love that he's just like kind of waiting in the wings, listening to their conversation. Yeah. When he comes in, he's just he just has like no empathy at all. <laughs> okay, I got my friend killed, so it's no different than that, and I have no guilty feelings about that. Yeah, that is that is weird. I never really thought about that, but he really doesn't. He doesn't care. He he um he he, he used it as an example of how he was smarter than the guy he was killed. <laughs> yeah. He didn't. He didn't want to do the job because of his own personal politics. But yet he referred it to a friend, knowing it could be dangerous. Then the it's friend, like uh, then the friend gets like, killed, and he's like, "Yeah, see, I, I told him." That's like uh, being in a movie theater and thinking someone's dropping a bomb next to you, and like just moving out of the way. <laughs> what kind of an asshole would do that? <laughs> did you did you did you notice that the contractor gave him a business card? Yeah. Yeah. It's another example of a uh, person providing their cred- credentials. Yep. Like, oh, I'm a contractor. See, I got a business card. That's right. What I noticed, too, is if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jason Muse is wearing a San Jose Sharks baseball hat. Oh, I'll have to. Uh, yeah, that's right. Which is weird because that's like, I mean, that's got to be like one of their first years they were even around. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think you might be right. It's funny because, you know, I wonder, you know, I guess that kind of has a Vancouver tie to it. I mean, they're both on the West Coast anyway. <laughs> but uh <laughs> um but yeah, you wouldn't uh you wouldn't think that someone from New Jersey would be wearing a sporting cuz the Devils are so big there. Oh, for sure. But then aren't when they play hockey, aren't they all wearing like different jerseys? I could be mistaken because again, I haven't seen this in a long time. Oh, we'll have to see when they um when they come, uh, when they when that scene comes up, because I do not remember. 1990, I, 1991, the 91-92 yeah, season. I was gonna, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so they were very new. But Jay was a fan. I love this, too. I don't, appreci- I don't appreciate your ruse. <laughs> he he just couldn't pay less attention. He doesn't even look up for his from his paper but i love that line my what your, your <laughs> ruse your cunning attempt to trick me and what the hell are jay and Silent bob up to outside yeah it looks like he's showing him how to smoke or something i don't know <laughs> like do they even uh, yeah they must know the cameras <laughs> I, would, that, I would hope so he is the director because <laughs> that's uh that's got to be purposeful and then he just cat calls that chick. <laughs> oh, Randall completely not paying attention to her at all. <laughs> and then she says, "Screw you!" And all of a sudden, it's uh, it's the worst thing that's ever happened. He's so upset he's leaving the store. Yep. You'll never believe what this unruly customer said to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my oh, god! Shit. The egg guy. Yep. Oh, uh, that's Walt. Oh, is that really? Yep. I never noticed that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, that's weird. Yep the first uh, the first appearance of uh, Walt Flanagan. 
Although he may have been one of the cigarette guys earlier. I think he was. I wouldn't be shocked. This is Kevin Smith's sister. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yep. What's weird is she kind of looks like his daughter. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh. Uh. <laughs> That's why as Walt wanted to be in this. He seems kind of like, you know, camera shy in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely probably the most reluctant seeming of all the people that have gotten, you know, one degree of fame or another from uh, Kevin Smith's movies. Oh, yeah, sure. But I think they're like really, that might be like his best friend. Oh, yeah. Well, him or Jay. Yeah, him and Muse, for sure. It's just so funny, too. You you cast your uh, sister in a movie. And uh, have her say the line that she manually masturbates farm animals for artificial <laughs> insemination. <laughs> uh, the perfect dozen. These uh, SAT words are are interesting. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't think they actually have any like relation to the plot itself. Um, a little bit. I, I well, some of them do. I, mean, I think Kevin Smith said at one point that he just basically put a bunch of them in there because he thought it would, you know, maybe like pick up on the college circuit. Yeah. Like that purgation that was that just came up is um uh cleansing. It means cleansing or pur- or, or purification, which doesn't really have anything to do with the next part that's coming up. All right. I got Randall just sold the kid cigarettes and just doesn't care. Yeah. Or and, notice. And now Walt Flanagan is back. <laughs> in a, like, the, <laughs> these scenes are so close together. And all they did was put a little gray in his hair when he was picking out those eggs. This is a Flanagan tour de force. Right. This, uh, his, uh, <clears throat> you shouldn't be talking this way. <laughs> Oh, uh, he puts on his, like, yeah, I mean, he doesn't voice. look any different than, than the, when you last saw him. Yeah. Uh, if you think that's offensive. Oh. Right. <laughs> and, uh, for the younger viewers, uh, they used to print out pornographic images and put them in magazines. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And no. leave them in the woods. <laughs> Yeah, we might have known people that did that. <laughs> oh. But yeah, it's just like, it's clear that Randall goes through his life as his own person, doing whatever he wants, whatever he wants, not caring about the consequences of basically anything. And Dante is almost the complete opposite of that. What's funny is if you watch Randall looking through the magazine, he just looks like curious more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. He doesn't have like a period interest and in he's like, oh look, there's oh, there's the milkmaid. Yeah. I think that's Kevin Smith's mom. Huh. Yeah, another uh interesting thing is we watch all the customers that uh that they hate. So do you right. have any and you have any new movies? <laughs> um Oh well, yeah, and it's funny some of the titles in the background, boomerang prop pop yeah. Prominently displayed. Yeah. Uh, Under Siege, City of Joy. Deep Cover, Dig Sound. But yeah, when it um, when it premiered uh, at um, you know at the uh, independent uh, film market in New York City, um, no one showed up to the premiere. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and uh, Kevin Smith was obviously kind of. Uh, bummed but he continued to take it to different um you know film festivals and stuff and it you know finally did catch on i'm surprised that walt flanagan didn't show up wearing a slightly different disguise each time (laughs) god yeah a lot of those magazines are gone too 
Star Magazine, Spin, Maternity. People just don't read magazines anymore. Maternity. Yeah, there's a maternity magazine behind him. Oh, I think I see the Weekly World News, too. Oh, I remember that one, the Bat Boy and uh, all that stuff. I think they have that online now, but I could be wrong. It wouldn't surprise me. That's the kind that would uh, stick around. But, uh, oh, um, Jeff Anderson and... uh, well, I'll t- I'll talk about I'll talk about this when uh, when she comes on screen, but uh, yeah, this is, this is another interesting little tidbit I have for the movie. This conversation between Dante and Veronica really show their level of caring and commitment. Like to <laughs> to him, she's a means to an end. To her, you know, she is, uh, or he's, you know, someone that she wants to build a life with. You know, he, he looks just annoyed to even talk to her in the first place. Mm-hmm. On that payphone again, an employee phone only. <laughs> And this is where he finds out that the boss went to Vermont. <laughs> he left. <laughs> and he doesn't close the store. Like, I mean, they close the store to play hockey, but he doesn't just leave. He was yeah, and like, he feels he feels bad about that, too. You promised you promised me or he promised me he'd be here at noon. You know, screw it. I'm done. Oh, yeah. I admit I'm going to Vermont and said, oh. Wait, wasn't he thought another employee was going to be there at noon? No, I think he was talking to the boss, and the boss said that he was going to be there at at noon to relieve him. Gotcha. I wonder if that ever happened to Kevin Smith. <laughs> if his boss ever <laughs> fucked him up like that. And Randall, always trying to help him out, um, points out exactly what he did wrong. That he p- apologized to uh, to the person he was talking to, like uh, right. you, he had every right to be pissed off. And he was like, "No, I don't." In his own way, um, you know, Randall's trying to to help him improve just as much as Veronica's. Try for the price, stay for the taste. Dollar ninety five Montclair <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know if anyone out there's ever smoked a Montclair cigarette, but they are pretty nasty. Oh, Dante can't believe his bad luck <laughs> that he imposed upon himself. Yep, that was really like you said. Uh, you know the um, the allusion to. Uh, um, the Divine Comedy and The Descent into Hell uh, with Dante. It makes... I hadn't really thought about it before you brought it up, but it makes a lot of sense. You know, back when this movie... Because I haven't seen this movie in a really long time either. And back when this movie came out, I didn't uh, think about movies as deeply as I might do now with, with some of them. So a lot Oh, of, yeah. See, look. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. There's no. a Penguin's jersey we see. Yeah, Penguin's jersey and Randall's wearing a, a, a Russian star. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get that from Ivan. <laughs> there's a devil's jersey. Who's that guy? I think he isn't he a, a regular or one of their friends, the tall guy in the devil's jersey? Yeah, he's. Um, I think he's I'm trying to think. I know I've seen him in at least one other movie that Kevin Smith has done, and I can't think of. Which one it is though, but I can see him like saying a line, like maybe with uh, Fl- Walt Flanagan. I like how they just go all out. They're wearing pads. They have gloves on. I mean, they're yeah. just not casual street hockey players in any stretch they make. Yeah, they're uh, they are fully geared out. Expensive hockey hockey gear is expensive too. I think that was probably half the budget of the movie was just getting uh, hockey equipment, right? And they're going to open it for the first period. They're going to go all the way down there and then open the store and close it again. Yeah, just a nice first period break. (laughs) 
Oh yeah, the Tampa Bay Lightning jersey. Yeah, everyone's got a different wow. jersey. That seems like an early, uh, early time for that too. Yeah. What's funny is this guy immediately knows what they're talking about. He's like, "Oh god damn it, they're playing hockey on the roof." <laughs> yeah, he looks up immediately. <laughs> this why? Why would they even play on the roof? That doesn't make any sense. They're uh, gonna how do they get up there in fucking uh, rollerblades? Right. Yeah, why not play on the street? Or in the store. <laughs> Just tear the fuck out of that store. I like They how, brought their nets up there. I like how he waits for a minute. Like, thinking, <laughs> must be thinking to himself, like, well, it's got to be close to the end of the first period. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, how many minutes left? Are there any penalties that are... Uh... And then he decides to uh, to come up. Yeah, the Lightning were founded in ninety in ninety the ninety two ninety three season, so they were like brand new. <laughs> What's well, funny is you can see this guy gets up there by taking a ladder, so they put on their rollerblades and climb up a ladder to get there. Shit, seems dangerous. Somewhat. I love that too. <clears throat> this guy can't even pass. <laughs> <laughs> He just I love that he's a, he's annoyed. He's annoyed he can't get into the store, but then he uh he gets even more annoyed that uh he's not playing hockey the way the right way. And then again everybody looks up immediately and then there wasn't that snowball again? Yeah, it was. It's like, ooh, I just lost some electrolytes. I need to uh get some more Gatorade. Oh god. <laughs> and then he whispers, thirty eight. Ugh. That's just completely unfair. This guy's not even wearing rollerblades. Yeah. And he, and he immediately cross-checks him. What's weird is that does it look like a hockey ball? It looks like, almost like a pool cue or something like that. Yeah. It's a weird ball. I like how they all know it goes in the sewer grate. Yeah. They, uh, somehow they see it. Give me another ball. I brought one ball. <clears throat> that does seem uh, a bit unprepared. Was this before they had the uh, the the hockey pucks for street hockey with like the little wheels on them? Oh yeah, yep. It's funny that uh, that this was big in Jersey street hockey, um, but I guess you know it's a pretty big hockey community. Yeah, I mean, I think the Devils actually won the cup around, what, 95 or so? So they were probably pretty good around then. Yeah, yeah, 95. With that piece of shit Claude Lemieux. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is that Walt Flanagan again down there? No, that's, a, the, that's <laughs> the old guy. With uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't have any uh, interesting tidbit about this guy. I'm sure that uh, there was someone that uh, Kevin Smith knew, though. You got? Any I know it's to- not. You got, you got any toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not, but he almost looks like the guy from um, the Borat movie, like his friend. Oh yeah, it does kind of look like him. He's got some giant ears. Uh, going back to uh, to go to the bathroom, and then he, you know, this is and this is another like uh, just odd uh, interaction here. He asks him if he can use the bathroom, which is for employees only. But he says, "Yeah, I could see a lot of people working at a store saying that. Oh, the guy's got to go to the bathroom. It's fine." Gives him a roll of uh, better toilet paper <laughs> because he doesn't <laughs> like the uh, the thin toilet paper they have back there, which is so weird. Then, um, then comes back after this and asks for a pornographic magazine to take back there. I mean, that's that's got to be like ninety nine percent of people's line, <laughs> like giving him a porno. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty ridiculous. On because it also implies that he gives him something better than what he had himself back there, right? Like one ply is good for me, but for the customer that I don't care about. Oh. It's so weird, but you know, if anyone is insistent enough with uh, with with uh, Dante, they can get whatever they want. Pretty much. Oh, I don't think they show us what porno he gets. That'd be interesting. I know he said. I know he rejects the first one. He says, <laughs> "No, the one with the biggest titties." 
Well, I mean, come on. Who wouldn't? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't see it. But he does appreciate it. Yeah, after uh, harranging him and uh, forcing him to give him everything that he wants, he's appreciative. <laughs> oh, 12 minutes of a game. I like how that implies that they know exactly how long it took. <laughs> like they have like a scorekeeper out there and everything. And what, were they were they playing like 20 minute periods? I guess they must have been. I guess, yeah. <laughs> there he is refreshing his uh, energy again. Yep. Or is he just buying weed from uh, Kevin Smith? Uh, I mean, Silent Bob. <laughs> uh, here's where we find out that Julie Dwyer died. During mid backstroke in the pool, which uh, you know comes up again in uh, in Mallrats. Mallrats. Yep. In fact, we find out that um, shit. Oh, what's his name? T S. Brody. That Brody uh, caused it essentially. No, T S. Ca- caused it. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. T S. Uh, said that uh, the camera because she was going to be on Truth or Date, uh, Brandy Spenning's dad's <laughs> game show, and T S. said that the camera adds. Uh, 10 pounds 15. or whatever. Yeah, yeah 15 yeah. pounds. And she's like a recovering anorexic, I think. Yeah. What an idiot. Well, and she dies <laughs> of a brain embolism. Oh. But, uh, yeah, and we find out here that Dante used to uh, date her. I think, I think, I think Randall says he lost his virginity to her. I think Dante has dated everybody. Yeah, Dante did seem to get around. This is a really weird, because if I'm not mistaken, this scene is very short where they go to the funeral home. It's like super fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which kind of seems like a very unnecessary expense for like a, you know, a filmmaker on a really tight budget where he had to sell his car and comics and stuff. Yeah. I. It's it's interesting. Um, I wonder. Oh, my God. How quick these, these cuts are, by the way. Not the cuts, but the <laughs> yeah. camera work. Yeah. Yeah, the camera is going whip quick, quick. <laughs> but at least we get to see Randall's sweet New Jersey Devils hat. Yeah, he, he switched uh, from. Wait, no, he was. What jersey was he wearing? He was wearing the, the SSSR. The, yeah, the yeah. CCCP. The <laughs> he borrowed. He borrowed uh, Ivan's uh, jersey, and then he's back to his loyal uh, New Jersey Devils. Yeah. Is there snow on the ground? It looks almost like there's snow on the ground now. It's hard to tell because of the black and white. Um, no, I, I don't. I think I'm wrong. It, it almost looks like there's a dusting of snow on some of the stuff. I think it's the sidewalk, but it just it's so because of the speed they're moving and the uh, you know the type of camera they're they're using. It's so blurred. It it looks almost like snow. I don't. I don't know. Maybe if you look at the ground, sometimes there's like little bits of snow. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, almost like there was ice on the side. Right, which is, I mean, I, I don't know if they never specifically say what time of year it is, but that's kind of odd. I mean, it could make sense that they were filming at different times. Like, later, like, oh, let's do a scene where you go to the funeral home real quick. Mm-hmm. But obviously, there's none on the ground here, so. Yeah, and they don't even show inside the funeral, obviously. Because um, I think it would, I you know, I'm sure that's a budget thing. They couldn't actually go into a funeral home and film and knock over a casket. <laughs> Yeah, probably not. Uh, Poston's funeral home. Red Bay, it, oh, no. I... Five minutes later. <laughs> I suppose that, I guess, the big, um, the big thing from that, uh, that whole scene was the story that uh, that he, he says in the car where uh, he talks about um, his cousin who died trying to uh, suck his own dick. And then, yeah. and then he asks Dante if he ever, you know, if he ever did and says, come on, everyone's tried it and all that stuff. Gets him to cousin, admit. Uh, gets him to. Cousin ad- Walter. Yeah, that's right. Gets him to admit that he did it. And then, uh, and then says, uh, I never tried it. Sick fuck. <laughs> it's a great story, but I mean, I don't know. There are other ways it could have been done, but but you're right. It does seem weird for a filmmaker on a budget. 
But I mean, like you said, they didn't. All they essentially did was walk up to it and walk out. They didn't necessarily even have to have permission from the owner of the funeral home. You know, that's true. And yeah. they people like that weren't even coming out that you didn't see coming out of the funeral home, just like right into the street. So, yeah, I'd be very surprised if they got uh, permits for any of this. Yeah, same here. I mean, obviously they had permission to film inside the store, which is where you know ninety percent of the movie takes place, but. Um... Yeah, I'd be surprised if they got permits for anything else that they did outside. Great. There's a cat. Yeah. All I want them to do at this point is just go around showing prices of various products in the store. <laughs> it's five cents for some kind of candy over there. Yeah. 20 cents for, I don't know what that, I can't even do it. Is that I a think sucker those are, maybe? I or? think those are blow pops, yeah. They got gum in the middle. <laughs> Chulies. <laughs> uh, I think. Oh yeah. Okay. I thought uh, this is where she came in, but not yet. Oh yeah, this is the fine. Or no, no, this is the um, yeah, the guy talking about the um, Weekly World News type. Uh, National Enquirer tabloid magazines. <laughs> that is annoying to just have somebody because I, you know, I've been, I've, uh, I mean, it doesn't happen anymore. But I remember being at the grocery store when I was a kid, and people in line would talk about that. They, you know, they'd see it on the rack and they'd say, uh, they'd read, they'd always read the headline, and then say, oh my god, it's so ridiculous and stuff, and talk about how stupid it was, and it's like, but like this guy, he's saying that, um, you know, he said that uh, he saw one where it was, you know, the Earth was going to end the next week, and then in the next week's paper it said we were saved at the last minute by whatever, and it's like he's making fun of it, but he clearly uh, he clearly likes these, <laughs> uh, these things because he keeps up on them. Yeah. Renal in pure dick mode, of course. Yeah, and also proving a point too, where, uh, where, uh, like after where he says uh, that his station doesn't dictate his behavior. Yeah, <laughs> which is true. Yeah, Dante is is a person that's very much defined by the roles that he gives himself, and Randall is not defined by any roles. Right. He's a regular Weisenheimer, that Randall. Yeah, oh, yeah. The original Weisenheimer. Could be. Master of his own destiny. Oh. Oh. Now we go up to uh, to Rick Darris. Is, is that Rick Darris? Yep. What's his used to, shirt say? used to wonder what all the fuss was about, but now I get it. <laughs> what the hell's going on with this shirt, though? No, I know that's what I'm trying to. I'm trying to <laughs> see. I don't think it is, but I wouldn't be shocked if it was tucked into his jeans. <laughs> right. The sweat box. Okay, that must be where he works as a trainer. Probably. He looks like he could be related to Jeff Anderson. Yeah, he does. I wonder if he is. Oh, feel that muscle. I think how she does. Thirty nine. And, and like everyone that comes here, here he go. Here he goes. His card again. More, uh, more credentials. Do you think Kevin Smith just actually printed way too many business cards at some point? <laughs> this guy, it's he has this, he has a bunch of cards on his uh, briefcase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those uh, things where it's like everyone in here is trying to sell something. Everyone except for Randall and Dante. Yeah. Yeah. Here's where he gets this fine for selling the cigarettes to that uh, that girl infant. <laughs> oh, Caitlin Bree, I love how he says that that this too. Um, 
How he says, uh, your Dante Hicks used to, uh, you used to date her, huh? Caitlin Bree. He's like, well, don't take this the wrong <laughs> way, but I used to fuck her. <laughs> I don't want you to uh, misinterpret what I'm saying here, but I fucked the shit out of her. Oh, uh, what a what a thing to say to a person. <laughs> Rick Darris. Caitlin used Rick- to talk about him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Darris shoots from the hip. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and Dante's so pissed and, and he's like, Oh, don't let it don't let it worry you. It was a long time ago. And uh the girl's like, oh, I'm surprised you didn't know everyone knew. <laughs> you know, I'm so bad at recognizing people that I just until now I realize that that's not as uh girl he's dating. Yeah. This guy looks like Dick Cavett. The guy giving him the uh the uh, fine. <laughs> Great. What's weird is if you notice behind him, there's an Intamin sign. I didn't. I thought Intamin's was just a Michigan thing. No, I think it's. I think it's kind of like us. This part of the Midwest and East Coast. I don't think they have it on the West Coast though. Four years old. What four year old smoking though? Really. Well, not in this part of the world. That's true. Oh, Mike, Mike brings it to reality real quick. <laughs> I, I saw a video of like a four-year-old who was like chain smoking in like, I don't know where, like uh, Cambodia East Asia. or yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I think how Rick there is like, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I fucked your girlfriend the whole time, but you're a low life. <laughs> what do you think we are in Cambodia? Oh. Uh. Here she is. Now, um, well, we'll get to her in a second because first we've got to uh, we got to do do Randall's whole thing. Randall wants to watch a movie and is in. Uh, oh, I can see big. Um, is that in, video store looks a lot bigger on the inside than it did initially? Well, that's the he's at. Uh, oh yeah, yeah you're choice right, you're right. plus or whatever first choice. Yeah. So this is uh, Lisa Spoonhour, who um, who plays Caitlin, and uh, her and Jeff Anderson actually got engaged when after after meeting on this movie. But oh, nice. did they get married or? Well, they got. I don't. I can't remember if they got married or not, but I know they they either got divorced or they broke up. But yeah, um, she. Uh, <laughs> It says that uh, it says she quit acting after Lisa Spoonhour after she lost out to uh, a part in a Nicolas Cage film. Well, who wouldn't? Yeah, I want to know what I want to know what movie that was. <laughs> if you can't, yeah, what movie that Nicolas Cage agreed to be in did they actually reject somebody for? But yeah, she's not in much. Like, uh, you know, she, obviously she's in this. She was in Clerks. The, she did the voice in Clerks the Animated Series. And uh, she was in a movie called Bartender. And that's it in 1997. Wow, I'm surprised it lasted till 97. Yeah, well, t- I mean, two movies. 94 and God. 97. What's that, what's that Nicolas Cage movie, though? It's got to be after 97, right? Yeah, because she said she quit af- acting after that, so... It, from what I read, it just said a Nicolas Cage movie, but it doesn't say which one. My guess is it's Face Off. Could be. I wonder what would she have played in the daughter. Oh no 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 way! She was too oh, old at that time. Maybe uh, Laura San Giacomo, or is that who it is? Who's the girl who, who plays his like a strange girlfriend that has the kid? In face in face. Wait no no you're thinking of Con Air. No 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 I'm thinking in Face Off. It's um. Uh, Nicholas Cage, like they they have that that slow motion like stylized shootout, and the kid is there. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. Maybe that was it. I don't know. I have to look that up. I think it's. I'm trying to remember who who played that role. Face Off was '97. It could be it. 
Yeah, because they would have been casting around, you know, around the same time. And then she's like, I can't even get into a Nicolas Cage movie? Fuck. <laughs> she took that she took that as a sign that um that her career was over. She couldn't get into a Nicolas Cage movie. I gotta say that's uh that makes sense to me. To think What's that. weird is uh I mean Nicolas Cage isn't a terrible actor, but he's in so many bad movies. Yeah, he's very bad at, at picking roles. He's you know, like he makes a lot of it, it, it's just thing, there there are he makes a lot of weird and interesting choices. So there are films that he's in that he's absolutely brilliant in, and then there's films that he's in where it's the weirdest fucking thing you've ever seen. Like the Wicker Man? Yeah. Oh yeah. Ugh. I guess both Face Off and Con Air occurred in ninety seven, so it could have been either of them. Wow. Cause if you're I don't know if you remember Con Air, um it's not really worth remembering. But like Nicolas Cage, like and this makes no sense at all. He defends his, his like fiance or wife's life at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And then he gets put in prison for it. I know it's so it, it's so dumb. That would just make and they're like, Oh, you're a military you should that makes no there's no no part about that that makes sense. And then so that could have been her, I guess. I, I don't remember who actually played the woman. I don't either. I remember she was blonde. Yeah, yeah, I remember that part too. But oh my god, f- Face Off, that whole movie is a fucking mess. Oh, yeah. I have to say that um, that Miss Spoonhour is not the best actress in the world. <laughs> Based on this scene going on before us. I mean, uh, she's probably the weakest... The weakest actor in the film, I would say. She's not terrible. Yeah, but I, I would agree with that for sure. She's not terrible, but you can see a lot of what she's doing. Yeah, she uses a lot of her like facial expressions and movement to convey her acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's There's... yeah, that's what I mean. You can you can see her acting, and it's not that's not good. Caitlin Bree, and she's kind of throwing herself at him here, uh, really tempting him. Dante is being tempted as he goes through the inferno. Mm-hmm. He may, you know, it's so funny because uh, it's it's really a situation of him making the wrong choices at almost every opportunity in this movie. He really doesn't make any proper or good choices in the whole movie. No. But, like, kind of getting, uh, you know, to expand a little bit, too, like, getting into what I was talking about on our podcast last week, um, you know, this is, like, the, you know, camera's locked down, static shot. Um, you know, I mean, they're both they're both moving within the frame. You know, it kind of limits a lot of what actors can do, too. Because you have to be right there where the camera is. But there's not, uh, you know, he, he obviously learned some techniques at film school. And it's not a terribly directed film or anything. But there's a lot of uh, scenes like this where it's it's locked down. It almost makes it feel like claustrophobic. But the scene doesn't really call for... Because there are times when something like this, you know, a, like a medium shot or even a closer shot with the camera locked down stationary... Um, you know, uh, kind of heightens what's going on in the movie because it, it gives that claustrophobic effect. But but this scene doesn't really call for, for that. Yeah, I would say his movies aren't generally very interesting visually, but obviously, like, the dialogue and that sort of thing are pretty good. Yeah, that's that's for sure the, uh, the strength. But, you know, we see kind of shot after shot of, uh, you know, just like even like this, which, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in the frame. But it's just, you know, locked down. And here we have a lock, another lockdown angle. Which I realize one. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, this is this is a difference. So go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say it's kind. It's sort of reminiscent, almost of. Um, I can't think of the name of the the movie. Bathroom man. bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ralphie Smith's. Uh, uh, Ralphie Smith's um, masterpiece, Bathroom Bloopers. I wouldn't call it a masterpiece. 
<laughs> no one out there is going to know what we're talking about at all. <laughs> oh, a little inside, I know. <laughs> oh, oh, that's awesome. But yeah, like I was just going to say, it's kind of reminiscent of... Um, uh, man, I still can't remember the name of the movie, but uh, it's um, one of... Uh, I can't think of the name of the director either now. What were you going to say? Because I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I didn't realize until now that I think one of my one of the funnier scenes is actually a cut scene. Okay. It's very short. It's um, where um, Jay and Silent Bob are outside, and you hear the theme from, uh, not theme, but the music from Silence of the Lambs. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like where uh, Buffalo Bill's like doing like his tuck job thing. Yep. And again, it's been so long. I don't remember if Jay was actually doing that or if he was saying, would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Yeah, I, yeah, I, pretty... I think he does say that. I don't know if it... I don't know. Well, he, he does say it, but I don't remember if he actually does like the tucking is, you know, Johnson between his legs. I think he kind of pretends, <laughs> but... <yeah. laughs> what I, the hell? I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's actually cut, though. I think... Um, I think it's coming up later. See, I thought it was during the day, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't remember. It might have been a cutscene. Caitlin Bree. And I think this is another movie that has like a quite a few different versions of it. Yeah. Like there's like a director's cut, the original cut, the original theatrical cut. Yeah, they went through they went through a few different um incarnations of uh of the movie for sure did caitlin change her outfit yeah she went home to change why because she's gonna go out on a date with uh dante okay okay that's funny that you say that like uh they you know were engaged at some point until her heartbreak over the nicholas cage yeah poor uh lisa spoon hour and she never uh, found the fame that she wanted. I wonder what she's doing now. As far as I'm concerned, she's hanging by her neck in her fucking closet. <laughs> Scenario number two. <laughs> uh, we should do basketball at some point. Yeah, it's a really good movie. I we would, should see if Ben Cole wants to get on that. I would love to do that one. Oh. I'm going to find this movie. Boy, basketball? No. The uh, the movie that I'm trying to think of. <laughs> okay, this could be fun. What, what's what's it like? Do you remember anything about the movie? It's, su- it's one of those movies. Are you that, in a quandary? It's one, it's one of those movies that people are like, oh, it's uh, like one of those like classic movies, but it's like really bizarre odd um Dante went home to change and he changed into that I know is he uh, is he is he an understudy for color me bad or something <laughs> eraser head I was gonna say eraser head that's the movie yeah it's a little reminiscent of the some of the shots are a little reminiscent of eraser head because that's a lot of um but see in that movie that that makes sense because um because of the you know the the feeling that um that David Lynch wants you to have in that uh, in that movie it's a you little know what doesn't make, yeah, you know what doesn't make yeah you know what doesn't make sense is she just thought she had sex with him in the bathroom she just left and he's out here standing here yeah the yeah fuck is he is he a doppelganger or something <laughs> she thought that he uh somehow uh Tra- uh, like phased through the walls, <laughs> and then put on a different sweater the whole, at while he's doing it too. It's so weird too. Why would you just assume that? Why would you go back there to go to the bathroom and assume with all the lights out that that has to be Dante? Well, because Caitlin's a horror mark. <laughs> I think there's a lot of assuming uh, involved with her sexual scenarios. Yeah, that's true. Maybe she thought, well, you know, worst case scenario, it's Rick Terrace. <laughs> or best case scenario. And she's had sex with him before. 
too was with Dante. So I mean, not to get like crude or anything, but don't you think she'd feel a difference? I guess what we've learned today is uh, having sex with Dante is the equivalent of having uh, sex with a dead man. <laughs> and that guy was like, you know, that guy was was uh, you know like a little heavier and stuff. I mean, it just I don't know. There he is. Doesn't even look like the same guy. <laughs> Oh, he has a goatee, so maybe that's what it was. Yeah, that must have been it. <laughs> and quite the uh, happy uh, moments going on there for the dead guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I don't know that I ever noticed that before. On the oh, I, in the sheet. You ever notice, uh, like, at a movie when they show like a dead guy or a guy under a blanket that his uh, penis points perfectly horizontal? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's. Uh... Nobody ever, uh, you know, jogs to the left or the right or, or up or I down. I mean, like, if you were standing, it would be pointing straight out. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. And who's this lady? Is this lady a detective from the 30s? Look at this. It can look, look at it back there. It got even bigger. <laughs> well, you know, see Snowball there looking for another, uh, another chance. Oh, man, you're upset, huh? You know, you know it always makes me feel better. <laughs> Caitlin Bree goes insane after this and gets put in a sanitarium. Eh, who wouldn't? My God, what the hell's going on with Dante's pants? They don't match his shirt at all. <laughs> and Snowball's just getting on there. Why? Maybe that's his father. Oh, I wonder. Is he eating something again? <laughs> hey, a man like him uh, likes to taste a variety of things. Ugh. I bet that ambulance was one of the most expensive things for this movie. Well, Leonardo. Yeah. Yeah, I just noticed that too. Leonardo, like in the um the animated series, which is uh oh my god, I can't wait until we get to that part of our uh of our series on Kevin Smith stuff, because that's one of my favorite things. Didn't they do a seri a sequel to the animated series? I have not seen that if they did, because I think he was touring around the country with it. I don't know. I'd love to see it if you did, though. I'm I'm almost positive there is one that I don't know if you know it's in any kind of video format. I think they filmed it or not filmed it, but made it, and they tour around like him and Jay. Oh, so you can't even get it unless you uh, go to. The I'm not. Tour. I'm not. I'm not sure if he released it. I mean, I heard that during the tour though that Bear was driving, and how could that be? Look at that crunch and munch behind Randall. I uh, do they even make that anymore? I haven't seen crunch and munch in forever. I think they put that in movie meals these days. <laughs> oh, so much product placement that they didn't get any money for it all. God, they get so much money for this now. However, they also didn't get sued for it, so that's kind of a wash. That's true. Yeah, I'm surprised that Fiddle Faddle didn't come after him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, there it really is. It really is just a series of of uh of Downer. one shots. <laughs> yeah. Like Empire. Yeah. You know, I just realized that uh, I think Randall's wearing stonewashed jeans. Yeah, I think you're right. Some weird clothes in this movie. Stonewash jeans. That's Do you think Kevin Smith is just like kind of wandering around while I just set the camera up? Maybe. I don't know. So it looks like they have their dialogue memorized for the most part, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Oh. And they're just, you know talking again about Caitlin, about Veronica, and Randall's fuck a dead guy. Randall's salsa shark uh, thing. But you know, it's <laughs> it's funny because he's he really is Dante's really kind of just telling Randall everything that he thinks, everything that he wants and all this stuff. And um, Randall's the, the only thing that actually moves the plot in motion from this point on is Randall. Like if it, if Randall hadn't done anything, the, the basically things would just fizzle out, 
But uh, everything that happens from here is because Randall's the one that, to take action. Because Dante's just not the type of person that can take action. Do you think Randall's like the equivalent of Virgil, where he uh, takes Dante through the Inferno and leads him out? I think so, yeah. I think that's kind of what what it's supposed to be, yeah. But he does it. Al- it almost like it's almost like he's saying to Randall, "That's what he wants," because he talks about how, um, you know, how he shit his pants instead of lifting the, uh, the, the toilet seat because the toilet seat was down and he had to go to the bathroom, and he'd rather, you know, that's the kind of person he is. He'd rather shit his pants than uh, disturb something to go to the bathroom comfortably. Oh, there are worse things that could happen in a bathroom. Uh, just ask Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> What's with the rings Dante has on? I don't know. That's another. That's another maybe '90s type thing, where men wore a lot of rings. I like how uh, after a day of uh, selling drugs out of the store, uh, Jay and uh, Sal and Bob are kind of tired. Want to relax? Yeah. I just want to kick back and uh, have a couple cigarettes. Is this uh, Sam Bob's only line? Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think it comes here. Yep, and it's the thing that um, that makes Dante realize that you know how good he has things, but then of course it's gonna be too late. Caitlin. Jay's, you know, Jay in his own way, too, has got, like, it's so funny because, especially, not so much in this movie, a little bit in this movie, but, you know, beyond this, too, in the more, like, kind of broader comedies, he's portrayed as, like, this complete idiot and everything, but in the same way, he's saying, I mean, he says it a lot more long-windedly, but he's basically saying exactly the same thing that, uh, that Silent Bob says, and it's oh, you know, yeah, for sure. And he's you know he's smart enough to see the stuff that Dante can't see either. Yeah, because Dante's in his own self-imposed hell. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that they show like the, the camp work here is actually a lot more like active, which is odd because Silent Bob is in the scene. There's a lot of cuts between him and you know Dante, and even the little cut of him stealing you know like five cent candies. Mm-hmm. That's right, it's not like a one shot, you know. Yeah, that is weird. That uh, and I'm trying to think. I if I remember the other scene that he was in too, I think it was the same kind of thing. It's like when he's on camera, he does more directing, <laughs> which is weird. Yeah, definitely. And, <laughs> and here's Randall <laughs> saying, "Yep." From what I heard, from what he told me, he wants me to do this for him because he can't do it. Right. <laughs> Which makes it makes sense from his point of view. This whole movie is basically summed up and like lampooned in a Jalen saw Bob strike back at the beginning when they're having the Planet of the Apes sequel. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Which is funny because it's just like Randall saying, I wasn't supposed to be here all, you know, today the whole time. Mm-hmm. But then what's funny about that is that whole scene probably cost more than this entire movie. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Bagel and coffee are still $1.25. That's about standard for these days. That's good. Buttered roll? You're going to get a buttered roll at a fucking convenience store? (laughs) Or a buttered bagel. They don't have cream cheese? I don't know. Oh, no, it does. Cream cheese, bagel, and coffee, $1.25. So for $0.26 more, you can get cream cheese and coffee. That is a good fucking deal. Or terrible coffee. Yeah, it's true. Oh, God, I want a crumb cake now. <laughs> <laughs> any, any specific brand of crumb cake? <laughs> Entenmann's. <laughs> oh, man. Veronica. I'll tell you, y- you know, she she looks probably more New Jersey than Caitlyn, but I think she's probably a better looking girl than Caitlyn too. I would disagree. Really? Yeah, I mean, uh, Caitlyn's not you know Nicholas Cage quality, but she's I think I I personally <laughs> prefer her to Veronica. I don't know. I like that shirt. It's hard. I to- like the uh, bow tie and the fact that she would uh, fuck a dead guy. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Those are those are. Uh, 
Points in her favor. <laughs> Catharsis. Yeah, that that and Harbing, Harbinger made sense. Yeah. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's weird. Then the big fight between the two of them. What kind of hours do they keep in the fucking video store? Yeah, I don't know. They must be open. Uh, well, like, they used to, like, Blockbuster used to close at what, two? <laughs> oh, they might have. I don't know. if I, Was it them or was it Hollywood that closed at two? Might have been Hollywood. Blockbuster might have closed earlier, like midnight or something. I think that's cool. Blockbuster was always the more corporate of the two, which isn't saying much. Right. Although uh, our uh, our Patreon is kind of modeled after Blockbuster, I figure. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I figure. I figure they can't sue us because uh, because they're bankrupt. Now. Because there's one store left. Yeah, one store that we will have to call at some point. Yeah, we should definitely do that. I don't, I don't even know where it's at. I think it's in. Um, I think it's in Oregon. You know what's messed up is uh, Family Video. They're still going strong. I don't know how, but there's still quite a few of them, and they seem to not be closing. Yeah, that it's and they're and they're a lot cheaper than Blockbuster ever was too. Yeah, I, I don't get that. Notice in the background, there's like what three varieties of Skittles. Yep, it's like sixty nowadays. Yeah. Yep, and two M and M's, plain and peanut. Goobers. Do they still have those anymore? I don't know. I haven't seen Goobers in a while. Or Oh Henry. I don't think I've ever had a Goober. I don't even know what that is. They're, like I know it's, it's candy. Chocolate covered peanuts. Oh, so the same shit you get anywhere? Yeah. Yep. You're paying for the Goober name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, oh, Clark Bar. I saw that. I was trying to see what was under Randall, but it's gummy bears, which he's now throwing at uh, Dante. Now I want a Clark bar. (laughs) I don't think I've ever said that. Product placement works on me. You know what I could go for? A Clark bar. Oh, a Charleston chew. Look at that old logo of the Three Musketeers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Now and later. Nice. I forgot they changed their logo. I see Nestle Crunch. What's the hell's next to Nestle Crunch and O'Henry? Um... Raisinets. Between, between them? Oh, wait, no. Raisinets was between O'Henry and Goober. Um, was that a Heath bar? A Heath bar? Do they make those anymore? I think they still do. Oh, everything does look so old. I, <laughs> I feel old. I was. Yeah, I remember being in high school and this movie was new. And Oh. Oh, damn it. It moved too fast. I can't see what that says. Uh, well, here's here's yeah, I don't know. here's Randall reading Dante the Riot Act and basically telling him uh, all the um, <laughs> all the shit that uh, that he should know. Pretty much, he really put him in his place. What's funny is if you look, all those papers sold out, so it was smart to get them from the. Uh, oh, not those ones. World's fattest man with its tiniest woman. <laughs> I see it. That's the weekly world news. Uh can of soda seventy cents. I guess cans ha- haven't gone up that much. I mean, it's hard to find yeah. just a can now, but you can usually get them for like a dollar, and you can even get like the bigger ones because I think back then they were all twelve ounce, maybe even smaller. Yeah. And they, I don't know what their deposit situation is over there in New Jersey. I don't think they... I, it's either five cents or none. I don't remember. But uh, I love that uh, that a vast majority of our commentary has been uh, the prices of things. <laughs> and, the, and the weird brands and uh, stuff they used to have back then. It's, it's really weird to see. It is weird to see. I do love that Randall dance. <laughs> So what do you cool. think? You think it holds? Up? You think the movie holds up? I do. I uh, I think that uh, I think it holds up surprisingly well. Yeah, uh, I, I do too. It's really. I mean, it's not. I mean, aside from like the the prices and the uh, clothing and stuff, it doesn't really um, 
you know, it's not, it could be definitely taking place, you know, to. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, it's, it's definitely. <laughs> Wolf Flanagan plays four roles. <laughs> it's definitely still an enjoyable movie um, and still funny. And I think. You know, like I think, like you said, t- like timelessly funny. Um, I think you could show this to a uh, to a twelve year old or a fourteen year old or whatever now, and they and they would laugh at it. Oh yeah, yeah. I see milkmaid Gray Smith, so it must have been his mother, huh? Yep. Scott Mosier was one of the mourners as well. <laughs> <laughs> one of the mourners. Yeah. We didn't see Jeez. any of them. No, you saw the back of them when they ran out. Oh, yeah, that's right. But if you look at the cat, the cat's name is Lennon's Tomb. What the fuck kind of name for a cat is that? <laughs> Can you imagine calling that cat when it runs out in the middle of the night? Lennon's Tomb. It's so weird, too, because I'm, I'm almost positive it's, Muse, it's, it's Muse's cat. It, it oh, just, that would make sense. It, it kind of seems like weird, but it's... Uh, like a uh, very like subversive kind of thing for you wouldn't think that his mind would go there. I guess that's what I'm right. trying to say. Snowball. Uh, All right. Well, I think that's the end of the movie. Yep. Yeah, that is our audio commentary of clerks. The, uh, the animated series. No, that's our audio. I com- wish. Yeah. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do that. Like a, a um, just Do like, an episode a week or something? Yeah, episode by episode one. That's not a bad idea. Uh, we are Massive Late Fee, Mike and Mark. Let us know uh, if you like this. Obviously, uh, you can uh, write to us at Michigan Sports. Or no, you can. we're the official podcast of Michigan Sports Entertainment. I forgot that I got our, our own uh, Gmail. You can write us at uh, Massive Late Fee at gmail.com. You can find us at Massive Late Fee on Twitter, Massive Late Fee on Facebook. Uh, Friendster, MySpace, S. <laughs> Use all of them. That's right. Look for uh, our uh, Patreon if you want. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that is us. So have a great day, everybody. Later.